Hi everyone, uh, Randy here, amateur radio operator in 2 cua Welcome back. Um, playing a little bit here. I um, was playing with the um, back to quarter wave lengths of certain pieces of open ended coax um, act like tuned circuits, as it were, tuning stubs. So I've hooked the um, output of the um, <coughs> tracking generator which is right here. I've connected that to the input. And that's what you're seeing up here at uh, zero. It's really uh, set to minus 20, but it's a zero reference there. And then what I've done in the middle of the connector, where I connected them together in the middle of the cable, rather, is I did this, okay? So what I want to do is I've got two cables. Um, these two here, they're cut off. They're um, different lengths, okay? So they should be different frequencies. <coughs> so, um, I can prove that too, and I will. <laughs> so we put that on there, and the way that dip is, that's where that one's tuned to. So we'll put on, actually the markers are already on, so we're on marker two, so we'll use two. Might as well, it's already there. And we'll go down into the middle of the dip. Now notice the dip's kind of sharp there, okay. It's pretty much in the middle. Um, let's get my glasses so I can see better here. And, that's marker number two, and it's sitting at uh, minus 53 dBm, and at 126.666 megahertz. Um, now, I could try to move that up this a little bit to 50. Well, that's no 49, 50. Right around there is 50. Let me go to the other marker. What I'm doing now is trying to get the band pass of this particular. Item. It's not going to be very wide, obviously, you can tell by looking at it. Alright, I'm not going to be able to get that perfectly close, but... Well, actually, that's not so bad right there. And so we're talking... Hmm, looks like one point... Let's see, 25.8, 26.8... Kind of like 1.6 megahertz, I guess. Okay, now I'm going to put the other cable on. Watch what happens to it. My battery's dying in the camera here, so I hope I can get this finished. Here goes the other one. Oh, look at that. Now it's a whole lot wider. Because the other one's tuned just a little bit off, but I tried to do it so that they were kind of together so that we could get a wider band pass. That was the whole idea. So again... <coughs> oh, and also the bottom of this now... Um, I'm turn this on video averaging, it'll be easier to do the measurements. Um, the bottom of this is now more like minus 60, so not only did it make it wider, but it also made the notch deeper by about another 10 dB. So I'm going to go ahead and go up, see if that's around 62, let's say, go up to 60, and then we'll switch to the other marker, and we'll go up to around 60 on that one. Roughly. And now we're showing a bandwidth of like 5.21 megahertz. So, I mean, we've increased it quite substantially from like 1.6, I think it was 1.8 megahertz, to um, a little over 5 megahertz in bandwidth. And the notch actually dropped um, almost 10 dB more. So it's just interesting. It's what you can do with tuning stubs using for, I guess in this case, notches. I assume tune cavities kind of run the same way. I'm not positive about that. But, um, you know, 50 dB of, uh, 60 dB of uh, notches could be pretty effective if you wanted to uh, try to filter out a specific frequency that you might be receiving, causing interference, in mod, whatever. <coughs> so that's what I wanted to share kind of a quick video, but it was fun, and I should finish it before this poor battery kicks the bucket here. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it fascinating, and uh, so until next time, N2CUA, Randy, saying 7-3s.